Casper, I want to talk about stocks that lift the spirits of our portfolios and also our own spirits. We're getting close to winter time. It's getting darker earlier outside. We're going to talk about something nice. Is, talk, lifting the spirits. It's Thursday yes. afternoon. Yes. And there is one share <laughs> in the UK that's up 35%. Today. Today. I'm going to talk about that share. Yes. Why has it gone up? And should you buy it or should you not buy it? No, but it's know. in your line of your question about the yes, spirits. Yes, the, the spirits. spirits. We're what not about spirit, mental spirits. We're talking here about spirits that you can drink, right? Yeah. Um, um, what to, what stock are we talking up. about? No, first you. Yeah, but I, I talk about only large cap stocks, as you know. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'm talking, what I want to talk it? about Diageo. You know Diageo? No. Yeah, you know it. Yes, I know it. It's a, it's a really nice company. You know, it, 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 the company started in 1627 with a club, the Hague Club, one of the first clubs where gentlemen could go and have a drink without their wives. Eh? Because in that time, there was a club of whiskey stokers in, um, in the north of Scotland. And they all of a sudden said, hey, we can make money on this uh, uh, beverage story. So then they uh, met Arthur Guinness in 1759. Arthur Guinness, you know, I think where I'm, where I'm going. And that guy... We can say that his glass was always half full. He was very positive about what he was doing. He started making ale in the gym since James Gate in Dublin. And, uh, you know, he signed a contract. When you start a business and you're so positive that you will do well, he signed a 9,000 year rental contract for that building next to the same James Gate. To rent it. To rent it. 9,000 year rental contract. That's long. Yeah, you could also say you could have bought it. <laughs> but but uh, he is a very positive man. Then obviously in 1820, G.I. Joe started working with John Walker, um, also a, a famous brand, I think, for um, people that like whiskey. Tanqueray, gin, also somebody. And they, they had they started in London, so not in Scotland, but in London. On In the Bloomsbury area, they started making gin, distillery of gin. And then sort of sort of strange step out, something that we... Yeah, we were, they, were they really early with the gin? Uh, I can't say if they were the early, the earliest ones, but, but they at least they were after the Dutch because the Dutch invented they invented the gin. the gin. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's we, true. That's, we did it. Yes. Yeah. Then they started uh, also selling vodka mm -hmm. um, through, um, I think, a famous guy that we all know. It's uh, uh, Smirnov, mm -hmm. the Russian guy. Mm -hmm. He, uh, it's a guy that fled out of Russia because of the big revolution, and he um, he planted himself in uh, in the UK, and he started making uh, yeah his vodka there and selling it under the. Uh, company of the Agio. Um, yeah, I'm giving you some history background here, so I'm told that you know about the the size of this company, right? I, I want you to really know history. Well. Yeah, 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 because you're going to talk about something small. So I want I want to present you something big. 1974, Bailey's um, was well, actually the the brand, one of the most successful brands of the Agio. 2000, something interesting I didn't know. They owned Burger King. Burger King was owned by the Agio, and they sold all the business of Burger King 22 years ago to fully focus on uh, drinks. What is important, they are one of the, and since 2021, they, the majority of their spirits are produced completely carbon neutral mm -hmm. in a big uh, distillery in Kentucky. So, um, yeah, interesting to know from an investment perspective, 40% um, of the total sales come from the emerging markets. And it's not only that they um, uh, focus on making nice drinks. They also look at the chemical process behind the ads, obviously. But they have all still all those brands. That all those brands mentioned. that I just like mentioned. Smirnoff. Smirnoff, all those big, uh, big, uh, and they basically they grew ah. based on takeovers. So they bought and they're probably going to buy your company. Because, probably, you know, because, yeah, because it's such uh, a good company. But I like what, they, because I, I, the CEO said in the last thing, everything we do, we think we can monetize beauty. Yeah, um, so for an example, what he's doing, the, the bottle of Bailey's, he designed that with Stephen Webster, which is a very famous jewelry designer. And he, so every, they want to really make nice products. And, and they say, what you drive, what you wear, and what you drink well, well, says a lot about you. Okay, but that's the company. And now if you look at the stock market, how... Uh, you uh, first of all, I'm selling the stock here. <laughs> it seems like, you know, the company in the stock market, also for you this year, we said we're going to talk about stuff that boosts your spirits. Very negative stock market here, eh? market down about 20%, you could say that on average. The Agio, you could, you could buy it in uh, January 1st at uh, 36 uh, pounds, and you can still buy that today for 36 pounds. So it's exactly flat, no big movement. A bit of a boring stock. Wall Street, the forecast of the analysts, say about 25 analysts, that you should uh, hold it, um, and they predict 
in a year's time an upside potential of 17%. Dividend-wise, almost 2%, not extremely high, but not so uh, bad either. Insiders, so people working at DIG, are buying a significant amount of their own stock. Also something to bear in mind, looking at the price earnings, we always like to do that. 26 times the profit, but for a company as this, it's similar. You know, their biggest competitor is uh, Beam, uh, B uh, E A M, the US, similar size, and they also more or less on that that level. Turnover about 17 billion, so it's a quite a big company. Um, looking at the assets, 37 billion of assets against 16 billion of debt, so it's a 50 percent debt ratio. That's that's quite quite high. And um, yeah, as I said, the profits about four billion on an annual basis, which turns down to be one pound eighty per share. If it multiplied by twenty six, is then obviously the price that we're talking about at the moment. So, do you think it's interesting? I think it's, and also from a technical perspective, if you see where it comes from, it's it's one of those stocks that um, you sh well, what they make will give you a headache, but this will not give you big headaches. I think. It depends on eh, how much you... Uh... No, but if I look at the history, yeah. it's a little bit oversold at the moment. Um, so this year was higher, actually. So when the whole market was already down, they were still in a positive territory. And at this moment, they're oversold. You can buy them. And that's interesting. If you, you know, I like to look at Fibonacci. You can buy them at from the from the lowest point at, at Corona till Christmas. You can buy them only at a 23% retracement. So And they're exactly at that 23.6 retracement. value stock? It's um, consumer cyclical. But also value, described. I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, it has a lot of value, especially the brands yeah. from that perspective. So, um, yeah, so I think it's interesting. We want to talk about what's the market capitalization? You said. Uh, you said yeah, the value, the assets are thirty-seven billion, but I don't know the market cap. I don't know the money. They have thirty-six pounds per share. I don't know the, the total amount of shares. I didn't write it down. Because the company where I'm talking about has a market cap not even 100 million Sorry, pounds. I, I remember 89 billion. Pounds. 89, yeah. 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 89 yeah. billion pounds. And the, com the company I talk about <laughs> has only 1% of it. Okay, well, not I'm going to have a drink now. So. Not even, <laughs> no, but it's because okay. you buy it relatively. Um, what I said in the beginning today, a stock that went up 35%. And that's quite a lot. Um, so doesn't happen every day. It took our attention but also because we spoke about it i think it was one month ago it was the wine day mm. one day a worldwide wine day so we had a little post on it on instagram and we mentioned this one because it has a funny name i think um because it's called naked wines hey, but, hey just just i'm, I'm going to ask you something because is the stock 35 percent down or up up you sure yes sure today i thought it was on the left side, on the, on the biggest. It was green. Yeah. Um, okay. So it's I a small you. company and it's a bit of a funny name. Na naked Wine PLC. Why is it called Naked? And maybe you think about something, but it's because. It's, yeah, when you talk about Naked, I think about something, yes. It's, yeah, but it's, it's, it's about pure wines. So they want to have pure wines. And what are pure wines? Not oak wines, for example. Pure wines. Not that oak. Is, yeah, no oak in it. So pure wine. So not. So you taste the wine. You taste the grapes. So they're in, can, in metal barrels. Yeah, yeah. So they are mainly younger wines. And what does the company do? They exist since two thousand and eight. So it's not a newbie, and they don't produce any wines. But you can compare it like a crowd fund company, because they have members. Mm. And they have around three hundred fifty thousand members worldwide. And what do the members do? They pay forty pounds per month and for that 40 pounds there's like a voucher mm -hmm. they can buy wines and they don't have to buy it for that month they can also say okay i use the voucher next month and i have 80, 80 pounds, pounds and I, I spend it i'll buy a more expensive wine yeah um and what do they do with them what is their business model what's their concept they say okay we believe in the smaller companies in the smaller wine yards and for them, it's really difficult to produce because they have a high eh, intensive cost rate. So what they do, so they the money that that they don't call them clients, they name they name them angels, eh, like business angels. Mm. So they give that money to the producers. So they give money upfront. That's why you can compare it with crowdfunding. So they use that 
the winemakers use that to make the produce the producement and then they sell it to their members to the angels and they say they have around 60 percent uh, because they cut out the middleman mm. there you go directly to the, from the producer to the customer um, of course their margin their business model is that they have a margin on it they is make the wines so they say yeah you can have discounts uh, of 60 percent on it so so how many uh subscribers do they have Three hundred fifty thousand. wow yeah. only in the uk no no worldwide and they have around they support around 166 166 wine and makers. you have to go to a shop or you can no no, no online. everything online they you you have a uh, online shop yeah online everything's online wow. a nice concept yes and, and there the was an article good. there was an article and that was from um uh, light street capital with glenn Kegger, and he said this stock can be going up thousand percent in the, and then thousand percent in the next 10 years so yeah, yeah. it's only uh, it's not cumulative but it's only 100 percent a year yeah not even but 100 this is not a lot so then I, when i saw that article and he he described uh, this it can be the, the netflix of the winery okay. he was not drunk when he wrote it i don't know he didn't he didn't tell me it was not an article but um then i saw in the bottom of the article he uh, he has a position of 10 percent it's 10 percent in it <laughs> yeah, good that you mention it yeah so that's that's if you because if you look it up you probably you can find that article because it's a recent article so mm. people will see mm. that and then okay be, be careful with it so is it an interesting model um 35 percent up today but year to date it's still 80 percent down um is it yeah. an interesting model i don't know it's a small company especially compared to your big company mm. and financial times wrote an article about it a couple of years ago and they said ah but we compared you can't compare wine to wine because the, the wines that you buy through the website aren't for sale in the chateaus no. so you can't compare really so no. you have to compare similar wines and the financial times said no but we don't see a big difference but i think that i saw also somewhere they have their own wine club so they and I think, yeah. why does the financial times say that because they're competing, yeah, of course. They're competing with them yes yeah, yeah. And if you look at um, if you look at the outlook, um, it's quite dangerous because it's expected. It's a small company, so not a lot of analysts are on it. But they mm. make a loss next year and the year after. Who's paying for that? Shareholders. Shareholders. So I think it's an interesting concept. Um, but even with three hundred fifty thousand clients slash angels, they still this year they make a profit probably but next year it's expected so they invest a lot eh? it's mm. like uh, for for the new angels yeah, yeah, yeah. And for the new uh, winemakers so it's a really high 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 risk company but that's what you see it's Just, funny yeah do, do, do the comparison that we yeah. make here we're in both the same sector sort of like mm. but the difference because yeah. you said the agile could like it would be like a like a safe stock and 80 percent down is a lot but yeah, uh, Netflix, okay, they had good figures this week and now they are maybe 60% off. So they also say, but if a, if a stock can go up 35% in a day, normally, if there is not a takeover or something, it's a really high risk <laughs> yeah. stock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So look at it, follow it maybe. And if you are interested in wine, you can maybe be an, uh, an angel. Maybe you like the concept. And I, well, I looked something up to close down because we are have healthy watchers. Let me see here to go for you. What is the most healthiest wine, Martin? I have no idea. In the world. Yeah, I don't know. Tell me. Yeah, I'm look it up. And it's somewhere on my paper. It's somewhere on my paper. It's the Pinot Noir. I remember, but I also want oh, to know. Pinot Noir, yeah? Why? Because they have, I can't find it, but it's the Pinot Noir. It's the most healthiest grape for wines because they have the less sugar in it and it's probably not the best wine what is good and what is best the taste wine of course no you have a really good Pinot Noirs so if you go and we go going to almost to December I would like to see the comparison which comparison no that one the, 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 of, of what is like what is more or less healthy just to know I will do that I will show you that tomorrow great so I think we also spoke about coffee uh, a month ago and <laughs> yeah. uh, we we looked at, uh, at 
companies in the food and drink industry. This is also, uh, and I think your company is really an interesting company. If you had it at the first of January, you didn't lose anything. Yeah, but also because of their two percent dividends. If that you look at, at what they what they also have, they own thirty four percent of uh, Pernod Ricard, which is like in France, really big beverage company, part of Louis Vuitton, of course. So they're they're it's it's a, it's a one of the biggest players here, right? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, we we told this morning what what subject. How I, did they How did they do in the COVID time? Yeah, they went down to almost uh, twenty. From, from the level more or less where we are now. Okay. Yeah, highest point, but it's not extremely volatile. So it's because in COVID, every it was just money going out of the market. No. Yeah, but also if you look at a company like Heineken, that also went down because Heineken is much more consumed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Bars and restaurants, bars, yeah. less at home. Yeah, this. But you are different. But yeah, it's completely different. You're not average. But also, I think the big stake comes from the majority of people. I, 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 oh, their majority of their incomes come from emerging markets. But I think the most yeah, consumption no, will be from will be from bars. I suppose. Yeah. I don't think so many people. So are. It, can, it can be in portfolio something is an interesting, some different uh, sector, uh, some different subsector. Yeah. The the spirits it's under the food and food definitely, sector. definitely, definitely. Yeah, we we could talk about more other stuff, but I think this is good. Yeah, and, and, and the whole world is talking about the results of Netflix and the results of ASMR. Exactly. We decided not to do not it, give it something, hopefully something new information something where you can do something with as an investor. Thank you for watching. Give us your thumbs.